Thanks for tuning in. Uh, my name is Frank Joop with Hexacom PPM, and today I'm with uh, Chris Lubrano, uh, Director of Engineering at Qt, and uh, we're going to talk about integrated engineering uh, today. So, uh, Chris, appreciate it, you being here and taking the time uh, to talk to me a little bit about that. Thanks for having me, Frank. This has been a great venue and a great <laughs> conference, so ah. it's been a really fun time this week. Yeah, cool. Well, that's great. So, uh, we have been doing engineering now for many decades. Um, you, are, you have a young company, right? Yeah, there are a lot of young engineers in your company. So what do you see that is going to change in going forward with the pressure so much on, uh, on schedule and cost executing these projects? Are we going to do the same all over or are we going to do something significantly different? Well, uh, Frank, I really think you're onto something. I mean, one of the big things that we see is the expectations around schedule, right? Yeah. Our owners are getting and our customers are getting a lot more sophisticated in the data they want and how they want to get it, and they want it faster and more efficiently. So, yeah, I think we're going to really rely on technology and data integration to really move forward how we can do more steps in parallel rather than doing things in a lot of serial sequence. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and the other thing that I have been uh, uh, talking about a lot also uh, to, to the other customers and Intergraph is, is rule-based or rule-driven engineering. You know, you, you got young guys in your organization, a lot of the older experienced engineers are retiring, so my thinking is that when we capture experience in rules, rules can help making the right decision when you do the, do the engineering. Do you, do you see value in, in rules, in, in engineering systems, helping the whole process? You know, Frank, to me, it's beyond seeing value. It's really seeing that it's a necessity okay. that companies like Kiwit and other great companies that you have here at the conference yeah. really look to see how you're going to implement these type of devices long term. And I see three critical points that you really need to implement great rules. The first thing is you need data to provide context. And I thought your CEO really did a great job of talking about context during the keynote speech. Yes. Really, the right data at the right time in the right versus the right assets is really going to drive the ability to do the rules. Because a yeah. lot of the time, the rules are really based on data. And without the right data, you really can't have right. reliable rules. Right. The second is having you know, tools. And you guys provide a lot of capabilities of doing a lot of intelligent things already. And, and really, the third thing is time. Yeah. You know, a lot of times when we implement a lot of these rules, there is really a little bit of an apprehension about, hey, the machine is going to be making some decisions for yeah. me. <laughs> and while obviously we spend a lot of times when we generate some rules really thinking about how we implement them, yeah. the user base is going to have to get used to a little bit of that concept of, hey, the machine is going to help you along and make these standardized decisions for you. That's it. right, yeah, yeah. I, I, I personally believe, you know, that that's the way we need to go because, you know, if the machine is learning, like Ola also said in his keynote, you know, to get more and more intelligent and, and, and assist the engineer. In the end, you know, engineers have to also make his own decisions, but assist in certainly modern tasks. But I think you, you significantly lower the risk downstream if you have good decisions up front, you know, that's I think where rules can help. I, I think you really brought up another good point, that there's nothing that's really going to replace great engineering no. instinct and great engineering decision making. The rules are just going to make a good engineer a great Assistance. engineer. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So you said that the owner operators more and more are requesting uh, not only uh, uh, just documents, print, printed uh, documents, like was in my time when I was doing engineering, but they want really the data. Yep, uh, absolutely. I mean, I'm really impressed with some how some of our customers are really advancing their ability to understand the value of data. And so we want to continue to grow a relationship with our customers, and I think these type of conferences are absolutely critical to enable a best practice across the industry so that we can exchange data in a standardized fashion, yeah. rather than reinventing the wheel on every project. Right, right. <clears throat> Do you see that the, uh, the cloud uh, is, is helping with the uh, project uh, execution uh, in your organization, the deployment uh, in, in, of, of the tools in the cloud? You know, I think that there are some great companies out there like Azure and Amazon Web Services that really provide the technology to make a big world a little bit smaller. 
Um, I think that there's great capabilities in the ability to deploy software across the cloud. Mm. And I think it's going to generate the ability to have project execution be a little bit more scaled to the right, uh, to the right size for the job. I think it's going to enable that, obviously you're still going to have big companies like Kiwi Engineering, executing engineering with thousands of engineers in a building but you're also going to allow small deployments or 20, 30 individuals doing small CapEx <coughs> projects. And the other thing I think is also going to enable for operator owners that are not necessarily open to making a large enterprise level investment to have a small deployment to hold on to their data when you ex they execute a small right. CapEx project. Right, right. And, and also, uh, yeah, correct me if, if I see that wrong, but um, Doing business is also risk management. You know, you have to manage your risk on projects. Some of these projects are huge, you know, multi-billion dollar projects. So you also sometimes involve contractors that have a certain domain expertise like Max, you know, like uh, main automation contractors to do a part of your project. So if you're in the cloud, you know, maybe you can fan off some of the, of the work to these people that, you know, take the responsibility and take the risks for that particular part. You're is, that, is that that's also some of the execution strategy that you have? You're absolutely right. I mean, Keyword works on a lot of large EPC projects and there's always a lot of risk involved in those and we've always found great partners to provide great value to our customers. And like I said earlier, really the cloud makes a big world a little bit smaller and enables us all to talk into a common tools and a common language right. without moving a team of 30 engineers into yeah. our engineering office for six months. Right, right. What I um, sometimes also wonder is that uh, when you do an engineering project, you need data to, of course, specify, to buy, and maybe even construct if you're in construction. But not necessarily that data is needed for operating. The, the owner-operator may need additional data, less data, because you already built the plant for him. He doesn't have to buy anything anymore. Are, are you working more closely with owner-operators that tell you, uh, hey, Chris, you know, you can do this project for me, but make sure that I have data when you hand it over to me that is actually useful for me in an operational type of setting? You know, it's funny, funny you mentioned that, Frank. Just last month I was meeting with uh, one of the large operators that are here at the conference today, and they were just literally having a proactive session to talk about what should we ask for. Yeah. You know, we had yeah. a very positive conversation about, well, what kind of data do I need? What kind of data do you think I need? And we really had a really positive conversation, and I think that's a critical thing because a lot of times, there's really a very small additional cost to in introduce the information that the operator wants if that requirement is understood up front. But if we complete commissioning, we hand over the data, uh, yeah. and then the operator comes back and says, you know, it would have been nice if yes. you included this, yeah. well, it's really hard for us to that execute is. that and do that after the fact. Um, so I think conferences like these are a really, really great venue to for operators and engineering firms and EPC companies to really get together and to find what that standard should be. Yeah. And I think we can make some progress at good conferences like these. Yeah, exactly, you're exactly right because it, it may be not too much effort to add the data, but when the project is almost over and everybody left on the project and then to ask for that, that's just going to be difficult. No, that's good, that's good. I, uh, that's a good, uh, good strategy there. So, you, like I said earlier, you got a, a young engineering group in, in your company. You feel that the adoption of new tools and so on is, uh, is, is easier in your organization than some of the, I can, to be honest with you, with other engineering companies that has a maybe a little older, I don't want to be offending anybody, but the adoption for new tools and new methods seems to be going a little bit slower there. You know, Frank, I just got back from vacation and I noticed that my seven-year-old daughter <laughs> has a complete, full understanding about how her iPad works yeah. and all the apps inside <laughs> yeah. of that. And what we see with a lot of the new engineers that are coming on the staff is that they've been really exposed to these cu customer-grade applications on their tablets, on their phones, oh, and yeah. so now they have that same expectations of enterprise right. and design and engineering applications. So as we move forward as engineering companies and as software companies, we're going to have to work together 
to provide the right user interfaces that right. meets that generation's needs. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right, you know, that, uh, that is the thing that we hear all the time about the user experience of these, these products that is so important and uh, make it fit, you know, the different groups that work with it. So, to, to um, talk a little bit, I mean, all uh, uh, keynote was a little bit futuri futuristic, you know, of uh, self-learning computers and so, so I'll ask you this, because I see some trends with the owner operators, they want to lower the cost of operating this plant, obviously, you know. And uh, they're looking now at, you know, you have cars that drive themselves, you know, actually Hexacon has software that, that actually facilitate that. Do you see that plants may be operating themselves and what impact would that have on engineering these, these plants? And because obviously there will be some more, I guess, automation then involved. Have you, have you ever, ever seen anything uh, like that along those lines? You know, Frank, I'm really lucky to work at a company like Keyway that we work on a wide variety of projects. And one of the things I do is I support our infrastructure design office in Denver. And one of the things that we were working on is machine control as part of the design. So a lot of times when we grade out a road or grade out yeah. large civil structures, it, one of the things we're doing is that we're actually using software to control the machines rather than manually controlling them. And so in the past, what we've done is that we've created 3D designs that that gets turned over to construction and they would go out and do that machine control yeah. and try to program their machines. Yeah. So now we're working closer with our construction partners and what we're doing is that we're providing that machine control as part of the design. Right. So yeah. where before yeah. it just used to be a file, yeah. now it's a file and it's data yeah. and machine control. Yeah, 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 exactly. We, we, can, we, we work with owner operators also that want to use our engineering data to actually drive some of the operational task in the plant. That, I mean, it is not there yet, but I, I see some trends that, that really going there. And with the internet of things that everybody's talking about, they want to connect everything. So you know how long a pump is in operation and when the time it's going to be, uh, need to be maintenance. And it's more and more automating those, uh, those tasks to lower the cost and also lower the risk of operation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've had a lot of really good conversations with operators where they ask us, hey, you know, we know this piece of equipment or, you know, this piece of machinery has this instrumentation on it. Yeah. What else could we use to improve reliability? Yes. What else could we do to auto for automation? Yeah. And the ability of having a lot of additional information pumped into control systems and have better control and have, you know, more advanced control rooms. I think it's yeah. really going to be an yeah. exciting 10 or 20 years yeah. where we see a lot of additional uh, yeah. automation. Yeah, yeah right. Okay, have you any uh, last things that you want to mention? Maybe something I haven't asked you and you want to bring up? Well, first of all, Frank, I really like to, on behalf of the Keyword Corporation, I really like to have, say thanks to Hexagon for hosting this great conference. We have had a lot of opportunity to meet with a lot of engineering companies and a lot of clients. And we really look forward to the partnerships and the, and the relationships we build at these events. Great. All right. With that, I'd like to thank you, Chris, for being here, spending the time with us. If you want to know more information about uh, this, go to the hexaconppm.com uh, website. And with that, uh, I would thank you for uh, tuning in.